Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dear students in the third year, uh, I'll summarize today the presentation of Eustacia Y in Queen of Night, Book One, Chapter Seven. Eustacia Y is a character in the novel The Return of the Night. I told you she is, she can be a heroine. Chapter seven, Queen of Night, or entitled The Queen of Night, is where Eustacia is first introduced to the reader, right? We knew, we read of her first in chapter seven. Here the readers are given full details of her appearance and personality. Eustacia by may be considered different from for her passion, for her rebelliousness, and refusal to accept the confined victim. She exists in a state of untamed romantic emotion and fantasy, and has little concern for the effects of her actions. These characteristics of Eustacia make her less typically of women during the Victorian era less typical, pardon, less typical of women during the Victorian era. Victorian era started in 1830 and ended in 1890. In the history of the United Kingdom, the Victorian era was the period of Queen Victoria's reign from, partic particularly from the 20th of June, 1837 until her death on the 22nd of January, 1901. But the scene, uh, so this should be uh, 19, yes. But the scene in which her androgynous, let's go, go back uh, to Eustachia, the uh, sentence ended here, then, I'll change the comma. The comma should be directly after uh, the date. So these characteristics of Eustacia make her less typical of women during the Victorian era. But the scene in which her androgynous behavior is most evident is shown in the chapter, Queen of Nine. What is androgynous? You should know what is androgynous. This is particular of Eustacia. How did he describe her? I'll repeat again uh, briefly. Her uh, 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 repeat what I've said in the previous lecture on Monday. Her hair, eyes, and perfect lips formed less to speak than to quiver are the most prominent features of Eustacia. Her eyes are said to be pagan, full of nocturnal mysteries. What is nocturnal? I told you what is nocturnal, active at night. She is a melodramatic and deeply passionate romantic woman, forever pining nostalgically for kingdoms she has not lost. She despises the heat, we know we knew that, and blames destiny for putting her there in the care of her grandfather, Captain White. How did the writer describe her physically? I'll continue. Physically, your state here is described as full limbed and somewhat heavy, without readiness, as without pallor. Readiness for the color red. As without pallor, without being faint, neither faint nor red, and soft to the touch as a cloud. This is in chapter seven. To see her hair is to imagine that the whole winter does not darkness enough to form its shadow. Her pagan eyes were full with nocturnal mysteries. 
so fine are the lines of her lips that though full each corner of her mouth is as clearly cut as the paint of a spear. We read that in chapter seven in the previous lecture, but here is a summary. Everything uh, about Eustachia from chapter seven. Uh, not only a summary, also an analysis. Her presence brings memories of such things such as Bourbon Rose, Tropical Midnights, and Rubies in page 100, 100. Her moods recall Lotus Eaters and the March in Ethelie, page 100. Or Ethelie, pardon. Her motions suggest the ebb and flow of the sea and her voice reminds one of the musical instruments. This is how the writer described Eustachia physically. The color red, black and red. Let's see the color red. The color red could symbolize love and anger. This is where the reader gets the impressions of her personality. And we uh, read of you read the conversation between her between her and Wildy, <clears throat> pardon, and noticed how she was passionate with him, uh, angry, showed love. Eustachia's beauty is highlighted and expanded and expanded in full detail. Why? Why expanded and highlighted? To emphasize the difference between her and women of the Victorian era. Eustachia Vi was the raw material of divinity. This is the first step, sentence in the chapter. This is almost beyond any other beauty to, meant to say for an English writer to describe his character as a divinity uh, or a uh, pious is to emphasize her beauty. This is almost beyond any other beauty. So beautiful. What kind of beauty? Beauty of a divine, of a divine character. Another point to be made that highlights Eustachia's difference, difference from the Victorian women or from the women in Egden Heath between her and other female characters is the fact that she hates the heat. Other women in the in Egden Heath do not hate the heat. She is different because she hates the heat, unlike them. And she hates tradition. She hates tradition, full stop. Egden was her hate, page 101. Hate, what is hate? Hate meaning a place of death in Greek mythology. So acting for her is like a place of death. Eustachia hates it so much she believes it will be the death of her. Agden will be the death of her. Uh, and saying that uh, Agden was her hate again, uh, is ominous. It the, the anticipates her death at the end uh, of the novel because she will be drowned uh, with wild. So here it is ominous. Egden was her page, or uh, the reader anticipates that she will die at the end. Eustachia hates it so much and believes and she believes it will be the death of her. She appears as a person struggling to come to terms with a lifestyle that has not turned out at all according to her expectations. Well, as the old one out, odd one out, one person is different. One thing is different. 
as the odd one out, the reader gets the feeling that no matter what she tries to do, she will never be able to integrate. To integrate with the life on Egden Heath, to integrate with the people and their tradition on Egden Heath, to love the place there. So Hardy portrays Eustachia as a misfit within the society in which she lives. Eustachia, or without much repetition of the word Eustachia, uh, replace it with she. She is bound by what is socially and artistically acceptable at the time. She's bound by that, but has an independent non-conformist non spirit. Uh, I changed the word Eustachia, her name with the pronoun she, because repetition will be uh, is, uh, undesirable when you write a, a, a composition, when you write an explanation. Since the name is mentioned here, there's no need for repeating it. Hardy, the writer, the novelist, demonstrates this by giving Eustachia one particular quality of character. Well, even though much of her life is lived as if in an illusion. Do you remember the word reverie? Dreams while away. So as it, she lives as if in an illusion. This is another particular quality of, char of the character of Eustachia. She is realistic about herself. However, she is realistic about herself. She knows her mistakes. She is honest in this regard and knows her own faults, even though she is not able to accept or change her fate in life. To conclude, the analysis of Eustachia's character to conclude the way in which Hardy uses a whole chapter to introduce one character filled with detail is to really bring a clear image for the reader. This clear image is then easy to recall and Eustachia being a main character one of the main characters in the in the return of the native is Eustachia, beside beside Klim, and an important one representing she Eustachia represents the social criticism that Hardy is trying to bring across. Makes it easier for the readers to, to understand Hardy's point of view. Eustachia Vi is one of Hardy's most memorable literary creations, a character with many different traits that at times seem to go against each other. These traits, different traits, seem to go against each other. Now you'll ask me, what is Hardy's point of view? the point of view of creating a character that is unable to integrate. There are many characters like Eustachia who cannot integrate within their own society, either because they are uh, different in an, in an objective way or different in a passive way. Now the question uh, I've sent you or asked you in the previous lecture, uh, the 14th lecture, why did Hardy describe Eustachia as queen of night? Eustachia is so called because of her fondness of walking at night in Egden. That's it? No, there is more. Also, she is so called because in her appearance, also Hardy bestows some nocturnal qualities her eyes possess nocturnal mystery, nocturnal mystery, pardon, nocturnal, again, I'll repeat its meaning of relating to 
or occurring in the night, a nocturnal journey means a journey uh, took place at night. Nocturnal activities, activities done at night. Also, it could mean uh, the second meaning active at night, not only occurring at night, but active at night, nocturnal predator, nocturnal insect, so Eustachia occurs at night, appears at night, and active at night. Do you remember the bonfire? She didn't let Johnny, uh, the, the boy Johnny, who helped her to uh, let the fire extinguish at night. And she met wild Diva at night. So her 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 hair is black also could that could participate to her uh, being the queen of nine what else and above all and above all eustachia the presence to the dark heat at night almost increased the beauty of the night her hair contained more darkness than that of cold, wintry night. And above all, Eustachia's presence to the dark heat almost increased the beauty of the night. This is repeated again. Eustachia is a local woman. She is a local woman and one of the major characters of the novel. She is exotic. What is exotic? Beautiful, ambitious, and eager to leave Agdinhi. Much of the action in this story revolves around the fact that men find Eustachia so unnaturally attractive that there are even rumors of her being a witch. Born and raised in the seaside resort of Budmouth, Eustachia's father was a musician from the island of Corfu. In Union Sea, Eustachia was educated and raised in a cosmopolitan environment, but after her parents died, her grandfather brought her to Egden Heath. We mentioned that in the 14th lecture, but I added her being exotic, ambitious, beautiful, eager to leave Egden. And I added uh, that her beauty or um, strange beauty made men think that she is uh, a witch. This is the end of the lecture. I wish you good luck. Send me your questions to the class, please.